This is your PhD correspondent Laura Simmons reporting here on endangered swamp orchids. Fairs what? Fairs Fairs Australia. I think I can smell orchid. Phaeus australis probably originated from ancestors in Southeast Asia, which made their way to the northern Australia. It's now found in coastal areas from North Queensland to North New South Wales. Laura Simmons is doing a PhD on this species, ecology and genetics. She travelled across its geographic range to sample and collect data, and compiles information to give talks at community forums and conferences and to finish her PhD. Fayez has a disjunct distribution from tropical North Queensland to the edge of the subtropics. And what we found with the genetics was that there was this pattern of genetic diversity that followed, um, that went southwards. So this is how the plant has colonised Australia. With the field data that I collected, I managed to create some population viability models and we use them to model how the plant grows over time. This is the backbone of the population viability models, so I can see the changes that occur and how the population grows and plants are recruited in that time frame. I've um, been able to produce a model that shows the effect of fire. So three of my populations um, were burnt during my PhD time frame and I was able to see the recruitment and the regrowth after the fire. So we have seed bank and juvenile and adult stages. It responds quite well after fire and the population level increases and then once there's another fire we get another quick decline dramatic decline in population size. For climate change, they're predicting increases in precipitation and increases in temperature. This is just showing the precipitation in the wettest quarter. And what we're going to be seeing in the future, worst case scenario, is that there'll be reductions in precipitation at the northern part of the species range and then increases in precipitation at the southern part of the species range. This will have the effect of decreasing population growth at the top, however increasing population growth at the bottom of the range. Maps here are showing um, the populations in the black dots and they show the current temperatures in the hottest month. Um, so this is the time of the year that the plants are um, producing seed and seed is germinating. So this is showing that over time we're going to see increases in this maximum temperature. And what we'll, this will do is exceed the threshold for the plants to be able to, um, the seeds to be able to germinate. So this is going to increase the temperature or the conditions to a more tropical. Here in these other charts are the central Queensland populations and we're getting here a combination of increases in temperature and decreases in precipitation and that's actually going to result in almost a half, a loss of half of the population over time. It's a tropical species, it's come from the north and as it's colonised southwards we've had a gradual loss of um, alleles over time. There's quite a lot of similarity in the makeup, the genetic makeup. This graph is showing all of the populations across the species range and they're overlapping which indicates that they're all quite similar. So that means that they've got the same similar alleles in similar quantities and there are small groups that are separated and this is just places where there is a unique individual or couple of individuals. We're seeing quite a lot of similarity between populations. Oh, self-pollination.
Washington. Why? <laughs> so the species overall is showing this trend of being a colonizer. So it has the ability to self-pollinate um, and producing a lot of flowers and a lot of fruit, therefore can rapidly um, colonize a new habitat. So after fire or other catastrophes, we actually see um, a very quick regrowth. Stradbrook Island is a stronghold of the species. This is where some of the biggest populations of bayas occur, and in fact they're quite continuous, occurring over almost 10 kilometres of a swamp line. What my results have shown is that, first of all, we don't need to be too concerned about how these plants are going to survive in their natural habitat. It's things like a catastrophe or if the population is bulldozed or feral pigs, feral plants um, and change drainage, that's going to have the most impact on the species. But if we were going to do a restoration project and there has been one that's been undertaken in New South Wales, um, it doesn't matter too much where we source the plants and the plant stock from because the genetic diversity is quite similar wherever we go. The biggest problem is the lack of plants. Laura Simmons signing off.